Hey travelers, Mag and I here on day 265 of our trip around the United States. We made it into Bowling Green last night and wouldn't you know it, we're in another county seat. This time, the county seat for Pike County. For today's route, we have 320 miles to cover. We'll be pushing our way north out of Bowling Green all the way to the far northeast corner of the state. From there, we will begin to make our way west along the northern edge of Missouri for the rest of the day. We're pushing our way out of Memphis, coming in through Gallatin, and bringing our day to an end at Bethany. Now we've already gotten all the pages except the ones that are along the extreme top edge of the state. So that's where we're gonna be concentrating most of our day. Fortunately, the counties and the pages kind of line up to make it a straight route west without as much zigzag as we've been seeing through the rest of the state. Unlike yesterday, we won't be hopping county seats all day long. We may see a couple in our route, but it's gonna be more of a mix of small towns and country driving once again. Mostly, it's a traditional day to grab those counties and pages as we cover the last main stretch of miles that we have left in Missouri. The day after that is going to be a very short hop by comparison. So let's get out there and see what today's route has in store. Come on, let's go. We begin our day in Bowling Green, the county seat of Pike County, with a population of about 5,300 people. The first thing that we notice standing proudly in front of the county courthouse is a statue of James Beauchamp, also known as Champ Clark. Born in Lawrenceburg, Kentucky in March of 1850, it did not take Champ long at all to determine that he wanted to pursue a career as a lawyer and a congressman. He graduated top of his class in university and shortly after was elected president of Marshall College at the age of 23, the youngest college president in U.S. history. After moving to Bowling Green in 1880, he became the city attorney, but he did not stop there. He then went on to spend 26 years serving for the U.S. House of Representatives with 12 consecutive terms. Once we depart Bowling Green, it is a long drive to reach the northern edge of the state. Unlike the southern portion of the state, which is dominated by the Mark Twain National Forest, the northern portion of Missouri consists of dissected till plains. The plains cover more than a third of the top part of the state, which are characterized by beautiful rolling green hills. Occasionally, we'd see a sign walking us into a small town, but after passing a few blocks through, we'd be right back out into the farms and the rolling hills once again. This turned out to be one of the most picturesque days we would spend in the state of Missouri, as we'd come over the top of the hill and see yet another view we would need to stop and appreciate. Rolling our way west, we stumble into the city of Adena, the county seat of Knox County with a population of a thousand people. Located between the north and south forks of the South Fabius River, this small city was platted in 1839, receiving its official map dot in 1850 with the establishment of the post office. Named after the Scottish city of Edinburgh, Edina seems to have always maintained its small town atmosphere, offering a peaceful rural lifestyle to the residents of its close-knit community. One reason I have always enjoyed earth caches is because they give you a great way to learn about the geological history of an area. So what exactly are these dissected tilt plains that we find ourselves spending all day within? The term plains generally refers to an area that is flat, level, and open. The till tells us what type of soil it is. In this case, clay, sand, gravel, and even boulders that have been deposited by glaciers in the past. The dissection occurs from erosion, typically from glacial runoff, taking the generally flat, level, open area of the plains and cutting through it with valleys and hills. Thus, we have the dissected till plain region. Our options for targets within our counties were quite limited rolling through the northern part of Missouri, so we often allowed the geocaches to dictate our route rather than the other way around. Almost every single geocache we came across today was located within 100 feet or so of the road, as anything beyond was usually a privately owned farm. They were not always your run-of-the-mill park and grabs, though, as many of the geocache containers often employed clever camouflage jobs. We enjoyed tracking down each of these unique container types, though we were a bit more challenged when we got into some of the smaller towns and the only options available for us were the very tiny nanos. Usually, I prefer to track down something just a little bit bigger, as nano logs have a difficult time holding my stamp. But with the limited options today, we were going to take what we could get. And what we could get our hands on ranged greatly depending on where we were and who the hider was. 
Many of these counties and pages only featured one or two geocaches within their limits, and sometimes we failed to find the first option, but fortunately always managed to track down the second. Ai-chan was more than happy to wait patiently as I searched around for the geocache and then took my time figuring out how to open it. It's always cool to find something this large in a convenient location, ready to help trackables move along to their goal. One thing that we noticed moving across the northern portion of Missouri is that even though it is all part of the dissected till plain region, there is a stark contrast between the east side and the west side. The east side reflects a lot more of the plain region, with elevations only around 500 feet or so, whereas the west side becomes a lot more dissected, reaching up to nearly 1,200 feet in some places. Those rolling hills led us into Unionville, the county seat of Putnam County with a population of about 1,700 people. When it was first established, this town was known as Harmony. Prior to its founding, the county seat for Putnam County had moved several times. Thus, they were hoping that the centralized location of this town would bring Harmony to everyone concerned. And it appears to have met that goal, remaining as the county seat since its establishment, and later being renamed to Unionville only showing further signs that everyone was contented with the centralized location for the county seat. Each time we find ourselves in one of these small cities, it only ever seems to last for a few minutes, and then once again, we are rolling back out in the country hills onward to our next destination. Our stop into Trenton, the county seat of Grundy County, with a population of about 5,600 people is quick, very quick. We took a tour of the courthouse, and then we were moving again, on our way to Gallatin. This small city of about 1,800 residents was founded in 1837 and named for Albert Gallatin, America's longest serving Secretary of the Treasury. It serves as the county seat for Davies County and offered us an opportunity to get one last burst of motivation before heading on to finish our day. Rolling through the hills west toward Winston, then north toward Bethany, we retreated to a beautiful sunset that seemed to last for hours on end. It illuminated the farmlands dotting the hillsides in a brilliant reddish-orange hue that provided just enough light for us to find the cash containers we were seeking without needing a flashlight to check into the darker crevices. And in keeping with the farmland theme, we came across an entire series of barnyard animals just waiting for us to discover them. First came the pink horse, then, not too far down the road, we heard the cluck cluck clucking of a chicken calling out. Then we moved just a little bit further down the road still and discovered a cow that had somehow gotten away from the rest of the herd. But what kind of animal might this geocache be? It doesn't look like anything we'd come across on a farm. Hmm, what do we have going on here? Duct tape. That should give us enough time to do what we need to do. Don't pull that thing off there. Let's hope this works. Almost there. You hear it? And there it is. That was close. I almost ran out of water on that one. Whew. Gonna need the resupply now. And of course, now that we're all done, we'll just go ahead and remove that. There it goes. Let it all drain back out. But not on yourself next time. Fire in the hole. With both our water supply and our time for the day thoroughly exhausted, we slide into Bethany, the county seat of Harrison County with a population of about 3,000 people. We would not see a sign of a single one of those 3,000 people the entire time we were here on the outskirts of Bethany. Instead, we pulled up a couple of seats and watched the grand finale of this sunset, which had been seemingly building up to a crescendo for hours. All right, that brings an end to another day spent here on the road in Missouri and our last day covering major miles through the state. We have one more day to go to complete the remaining counties and pages, and it's about half of our normal mileage tomorrow. So it should be a pretty easy day compared to the last week we've had in the state. Today was very different than yesterday. Whereas yesterday, we were hopping from one county seat to the next, 
basically all day long. We started this morning in Bowling Green, and once we left the city, we were pretty much out in the rolling hills and the grass all day long out here. It has been a very relaxing, peaceful day, and we've been able to make great time because this north part of the state, just like the southern edge of the state, doesn't have a lot of geocaches to distract us. In many of the counties and pages we went through today, there was only one, maybe two options, and that was it. So we ended up doing a lot of one and dones today, which is more than I normally like to do. However, that allowed us to progress much farther than we had yesterday in the same amount of time and even finish right where we want here in Bethany before the sun finishes setting on us. Thank you guys for joining us today as we continue this tour across Missouri. Like this video, subscribe to stay tuned for daily updates, and we'll see you out on the trails.